Dr. Jamie Jocelyn is the director of the Eileen Hoffman Hafer U Matter program. She has over 25 years in the field of K through 12 education, from teaching kindergarten to being an assistant principal of a high school to a transition coordinator. She has a wealth of knowledge in the administration of the special education realms. Dr. Jocelyn is always ready to educate and empower others. And she even agreed to do this last week. And I truly <laughs> appreciate her. I present to you, Dr. Jamie Jocelyn, to further your reimagining the future. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today to share information about the Eileen Hoffman Hafer You Matter program. This is an inclusive post-secondary education program, also known as an IPSI program. And I'm just going to give you an overview about it. So um, any questions that come up, please put them um, in the Q&A section or in the chat, and I'll be happy to um, address them. Next slide. So a few things I'm going to cover today. Um, an overview of our program, um, what students should be able to do um, when they're looking at preparing for college, accommodations versus modifications, what does our admissions criteria look like, and a day in the life of a You Matter student. And our, currently we have seven students, they all live on campus, so I'll share information about living on campus and what that looks like. And then if any um, families are ever interested in tours, um, how to go about that, and I'll go over a little information about our website. Next slide. Okay, we'll get into the program overview. So just a little bit about um, USF on the St. Pete campus. Um, I really like to go over this information because um, sometimes people think, oh, the U Matter program's here and USF is over here. No, it's inclusive. So our program is part of the USF community. Um, we are located in St. Petersburg, Florida. Our program size, our goal is to be between 15 to 20 students. We currently have our first cohort, which is seven students. And we have accepted eight more students who will start in the fall of 2022. Some USF statistics um, here on the St. Pete campus, there's a, a total of about 4,500 students. Most of those are undergrad, followed by graduate students and then non-degree seeking. We have over 80 different student organizations available on campus for students to um, participate in. And, so, and the biggest highlight, besides being on the water, of uh, the USF campus is it has everything a large university offers, but we're a small, close-knit learning environment. Next slide. So I think one thing that's extremely important to understand is how did IPSI programs come to be? How, how did this happen? How did the U Matter program get here? Well, it started off with federal legislation, the Higher Education Opportunity Act of 2008. And that is actually a reauthorization of the Higher Education Act of 1965. And the most important piece of this um, piece of legislation is that it made post-secondary education more accessible and affordable for people with disabilities. This law created a comprehensive transition in post-secondary programs that provided access to federal student aid and to um, people with disabilities for the first time. And then um, Florida legislation came with, uh, saw that there was still more of a need. And so the Florida Comprehensive Transition Act of 2016 was created. And that um, this act established the criteria for Florida post-secondary comprehensive transition programs. And the whole key piece of this is this program, um, this act created criteria for, um, for programs to be successful and um, this allowed students to attend these approved programs and provided and provide scholarships and um, monetary assistance. So we have our startup grants and our student scholarships that assist with the Florida Inclusive Post-Secondary Education Law. 
Next slide. Quick overview of the U Matter program. Um, we look for students that, ex that express a strong desire to continue their education in a post-secondary setting. They wanna go to college. They um, always had the dream of going to college. And the reason they wanna go to college is to work on their independent living skills and to explore careers that they're interested in. And we do have a few students um, first semester, they really weren't sure, but they wanted a career and they had interests that were kind of all over the place. So we kind of work at career interest inventories, job shadowing, and we engage in work-based learning opportunities so students can um, explore options. Next slide. So our program has five programmatic requirements, which is career development and employment, academic access and enrichment, campus and community engagement, independent living, and self-determination. And those five requirements really guide our program and help us set goals with students and help students set their own goals. When we talk about career development and employment, we're really focusing on um, finding what career you're interested in, um, what your strengths are and what careers meet that job shadowing opportunities because the job field is constantly changing and you may be interested in working with kids and then you shadow that job and you're like oh no so having those job shadowing experiences are extremely important because then you get to really um, discover what careers you're interested in and maybe find a few new ones we also use the Career Center here on the USF campus, and we use that again for to assist with resume writing, elevator speeches, and interview skills. When we talk about academic enrichment and access, our students audit college courses, so they are in USF courses with other USF students. Our students use the Student Accessibility Services Center for accommodations in classes and to take um, assessments. And if they have um, need any further assistance or tutoring, they use the Student Success Center, just like all USF students can use. Um, our students are expected to join and participate in student organizations. And um, with the independent living, we have topical workshops that we work on various skills like budgeting and um, following a schedule, how to use Outlook in your calendar. And the overall goal is for our students to become responsible members of their communities. Next slide. And the best part is the outcomes. So what is the outcome? What happens once the students are done here at UMatter? Well, they'll, they'll obtain a certificate of completion from the UMatter program, and the employment is gonna be aligned to their selected program of study. We will also be, um, they would have created goals using the person-centered uh, excuse me, student center planning process, which again, looks over our five, those five main goals. And the students will meet their career goals by increasing their academic um, access and enrichment, their community engagement, independent living skills, career development and employment, and increased self-determination skills. Next slide. So preparing for college. So um, meeting with, when I meet with schools and students and families, this is a huge question. It's like, what can we start working on now? So if my student or if I want to go to your program, what can I start doing now to be ready? Next slide. So the first thing is, is um, learning skills to assist with organizing, planning, and prioritizing. So for example, when their students are in high school, their schedule, they arrive the first day, their schedule is made for them. The bell rings, they go to their next class. So in high school, their schedule is really predetermined for them. When it comes to college, yes, you have your classes, but nobody's going to wake you up for it. Nobody's going to ring a bell to tell you to go. So creating that, um, responsibility and that in those independent skills to wake up on your own and to follow a schedule on their own. So another example is I had a parent goes, well, um, while my son is in school, they give him his medication. And 
at the UMATA program, we do not assist with that. But I told the family, so maybe you can start doing that at home. Does the student take like a multivitamin? If so, use that as a way to start practicing taking your own medication. And then using, um, helping students see how life management strategies are extremely um, helpful and how they can be used to create freedom and to help balance. Um, your life. Because if you have students that want to play video games with you, friends that want you to go out, but you have to study, being able to prioritize. And then um, some parents, um, instead of using the directive, like go upstairs and get your backpack, make sure you put your books in it, asking questions like, what do you need to be ready for school today? So helping the student own those decisions and those steps that are needed to be successful. Next slide. So what can I do now? Um, wake up, waking up on your own at an early time. So having that part of a schedule in place every day would be extremely helpful. Also incorporating exercise into your schedule, uh, creating a schedule and following it. So if you're going to get up at 7 a.m. and you're going to exercise at 8 a.m., and so creating that schedule and following it. Also doing your own laundry and cleaning weekly. That should be in your schedule, practice healthy eating. Um, when I was in college, we had the freshman 15, uh, that still exists. And there are so many choices when you walk into the cafeteria, everything from salads to French fries on the daily. So practicing that healthy eating sooner than later would be awesome. And then working on navigating new environments, maybe using an app on your phone, following the map of how to walk from point A to point B. And then also having a system in place to track all logins and passwords. And personally, I'm still working on that one for myself. Uh, and then practice locking and unlocking using a key. Um, all our students stay on campus and the keys work slightly different than a normal door, but if a student has practice doing it, it will be easier for them to master how to use their dorm room keys. Next slide. Also, um, as we prepare our students for um, our young adults for college, it's also as parents, it's important to prepare ourselves for that transition. So for example, in high school, I can call up, how's my daughter's grades doing? What's the status of her IEP? I need an IEP meeting. Um, I can attend that IEP meeting, and I can also say she did not get her accommodations in her language arts class. What are we going to do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Where in college, I'm basically silent. I can talk to my daughter and have my daughter advocate for herself, but if my daughter doesn't have those skills to advocate and say, hey, I'm going to go to the Student Accessibility Services Center to declare my disability because I want my accommodations. I want to be able to um, record the lecture in class because that helps me learn. Or I want to be able to request the PowerPoints ahead of time so I can review them and be prepared. So that's very important. Um, also, the students attend all their meetings. Parents are not, they're not involved. And that has a lot to do with um, the FERPA laws. And so that advocating piece is huge and also parents being okay to helping their students have those advocating skills. So when the time comes for college, they're, um, they're prepared. Okay, next slide. Before I go into accommodations versus modifications, are there any questions at this time? Yes, there's a question from Christy Schultz. How is you met or funded? Okay, so we're a grant-based program and that was due to the, um, the Florida Post-Secondary uh, Comprehensive Transition Program Act. And that um, we applied for the funding and we received the, um, the grant about, I think about a year ago. So, so we're grant funded in a short answer. <laughs> Was that the only question? At this time, that's the only question. Okay, all right. 
So next slide, please. So one thing that's real, um, I think is extremely um, incredible with the UMatter program, we work very closely with the Student Accessibility Services Department and the USF staff. Um, the Student Accessibility Services Office, they are more responsible for accommodations and the UMatter office is um, responsible for the modifications. The main difference between the two accommodations are how a student learns the material, the content doesn't change, the expectations for learning when we're talking accommodations do not change, grading is the same. So how the student learns the material, they may, again, if they're a strong auditory learner, they may, may record it. So therefore they have it to listen to later, or if they're visual, they'll have the notes in front of them so they can take additional notes on them as they're learning. So those are slightly, those are some types of accommodations where modifications change what the student is taught or expected to learn. It changes the expectations for learning. It reduces the requirements of the task. So for example, if I have a student, if the assignment is to write a five to 10 page essay, my students will take whatever the um, questions are and we'll create some type of graphic organizer for them to just address each question individually with either a sentence or a few bullet points or a picture, depending if it's a humanities class or what the question is asking. So we create an alternative as assignment, a modified assignment, so our students can still be successful, show that they're learning the material and the grading is different. Um, also, um, they have different outcomes. So again, as I said that we work very closely with the Student Accessibility Services Center. Um, some examples of accommodations are providing those PowerPoints um, ahead of time, um, recording the class lectures, uh, permission to leave, uh, to take breaks, and course materials in electronic format, and then the flexible spelling and grammar, which I think is extremely um, incredible. And then when we're looking at quizzes, tests, and accommodations, very this part's very similar to high school. They get additional time, um, computer for word processing purposes. They can have a person read the questions to them if they need Scantron assistance or somebody to write their answers for them. Um, the SAS will provide that. Also a memory aid, which could be like a huge um, index card with notes on it. And then um, a small testing room to reduce the distraction. Next slide. So um, the SAS office works with the accommodations for the classroom, quizzes and exams. And the UMatter office works um, with the modifications on the classroom assignments. If there's a study guide um, provided in the class, we will modify that study guide to match the um, quiz or exam that the student is taking, which our office has also modified. And then also assistance with scheduling quizzes and exams with um, at the SAS. Next slide. So together, it's a total collaboration because even though I modify the assignments, I just don't modify them and then give them straight to the student. I, pro I send it to the um, professor for any feedback. And so it's really just a whole joint effort between the SAS, USF faculty, and the UMatter program. Next slide. The admissions criteria for our program. Next slide. So this is um, 15 pieces of admissions criteria. The most important one is that um, our students need to have a documented intellectual disability whether that's on the IEP or in, it specifically is stated in the um, psychological evaluation. So it needs to be documented somewhere. Um, a student, uh, if a student has deferred their diploma, uh, the student would have needed to get their diploma. So they have exited the K-12 um, system. And we do have a minimum age of 18, but no maximum age. And all this, um, information is provided on our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep going. Next slide. Um, so once a student gets to USF and they committed to the UMatter program, then what? 
Next slide. So our program, it's a two-year commitment. Our students start off with the fall, um, our first, their first semester. This is where we're getting to know the students and they're getting to explore what careers they're interested in. We do have some students that come in that's like, I wanna be an educator, which is wonderful because then we can start doing their courses in alignment with their career goal. For students that are, um, aren't 100% sure what they wanna do, we start taking exploratory courses, some leadership, some maybe business ethics. So um, during year one, during the fall semesters and spring semesters, our students audit two courses each semester. In the summer, their first summer, they'll audit one. And throughout the semesters, we're constantly looking at career exploration, whether it's job shadowing or whether it's internships or whether it's using like ONET to um, explore careers and learn about them that way. Next slide. This is just a sample schedule of um, what are, um, what a day in the life of our students look like. Again, um, all our students use Outlook. They share our calendars with us. So we kind of know where they are. And also it helps us know like, hey, are you working on your job skills? Are you working on your reading? You're supposed to be meeting with your academic mentor to work on your food and culture class. Are you doing that? So it kind of helps us do like a check and connect with our students. Next slide. So some examples of student courses and supports. So first semester, um, all new students are required to take university success. It helps orient them to the campus, helps them um, use the resources that are available for USF students, and then they get to select one class. Uh, as I said, some students know what they're interested in. Um, some students did not. I had a student that's like, I want to work um, with fish. I want to keep the water healthy. So he took in intro to environmental science. After that class, he's like, I don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. Um, he likes working with students. And I'm like, you still like science? He goes, yes. I said, well, let's look at incorporating teaching and science. So second semester, he's taking intro to teaching and science for all students. So we kind of, again, work with what the students' career goals are and we um, use courses in aligned with that. Um, we have a few students interested in hospitality. So they've taken intro to hospitality. They have taken um, food and culture. They've also taken um, mass communications. And then um, I have students that are interested in business and they, um, they're finishing up their computers and business courses. Topical workshop, this is where it's just um, the You Matter group. Um, we work on specific skills that are needed, whether it's how to be a good roommate while you're living in the dorm, because a lot of our students are adulting for the first time. So we work on dorm life, we work on job skills, we work on goal setting, and then we also work on um, looking at data like I spent only two hours on our, my reading. How did that impact my, the results? And so we do a lot of um, role-playing during these topical workshops, interview skills, elevator pitches. So these are, again, things um, that are specific to our students that we work on together. The supplemental curriculum that they also do that's independent, um, the reading, we have a reading program the students work on, a math program, job skills program, and a social emotional learning piece that they work on on their own. Um, each one of our students, they do have um, what we call mentors. They have a residential mentor, which assists with um, independent living skills. For example, I may know how to do laundry at my house, but when I go into my dorm room, there's not a washer and dryer. What do I do? Oh, I go down to do my laundry. It's not taking my swipe card. What do I do? So the residential coach kind of helps acclimate them to uh, living independently. And then for each course that our students take, they have an academic mentor that assists with learning the material in class, um, studying for tests, and making sure our students are keeping up with assignments. Next slide. Um, as I said, uh, our students need to be involved in campus and the community. So our um, 
the Rays had $10 ticket night. Our students walked to Tropicana Field and went to a Rays game. Um, our students are involved in many different activities across campus from participating in baseball and basketball games from USF. Uh, they're involved on the sailing team. Uh, we have students involved in the sailing club, puppy raisers club, uh, all-star dance team, film club. And they also, I'm, we just had prom, our students went to prom. So they are really integrated into the USF community. And when we're talking about trying to fine tune careers, we do use the star person centered plan. And to the right, that's just an example of it. And each um, part that sticks out of the star is one of the five pillars. So the career development, academic enrichment, self-determination, independent living skills, and career um, and community engagement. And we review this every semester because some goals are short-term that are on this and some are longer. So it's really important to make sure we're staying on track to what the big picture is for our students. So they will be ready for competitive employment once they leave our program. Living on campus. So sample dorm room, next slide. So this is what a dorm room looks like. Um, all our students are living in residence hall one. Um, they have, it's apartment style living. Next slide. So on each side, there's two bedrooms on each side with a bathroom. So it's a total of a four bedroom, two bath bedroom suite with a full kitchen and a living space in the center. So again, this gives us a great opportunity to work on independent living skills because they have to clean their area and they actually clean it and send pictures to me on a weekly basis. So I know that what their rooms look like. And um, also we can work on cooking skills in, in, their, in their suite. Next slide. Uh, so with the housing opportunities, as you, um, you saw um, an apartment style suite for students to live in. Um, there's also um, a few other different residential halls that are available on campus. Um, when our students are on campus living, um, we do not have four UMatter students in one room. We have two UMatter students and two traditional USF students. And so far, everything has been wonderful. Students have been extremely supportive by USF students and by each other. So, which has been extremely positive. Next slide. Next slide. So um, when people go, oh, I want to tour the UMatter program. Well, I said, well, that's kind of a problem because we don't, our program is inclusive into USF. So I recommend that you tour USF. And once you set up your tour date and time, let the UMatter program know, and we'll have somebody meet with you either before your USF tour or after your USF tour to talk about the UMatter program which is great because that way they get to hear about the USF campus from somebody that is trained to give tours. Next slide. And this is just a, a sam, uh, an example of what the calendar looks like when um, somebody goes to register for a tour. And again, and then it says contact the UMatter staff when uh, they are ready for a tour. Next slide. And then our website has a lot of valuable information on it. No, you were good. You were good. Thank you. Um, has a lot of valuable information on it. Uh, the frequently asked questions, those cover everything from um, if my student deferred their diploma, can they still apply? What's the admission criteria? How do I get a tour? How much does it cost? How can I prepare, help and prepare my um, student for college? And then it also has our digital brochure, uh, our advisory board, and um, our business advisory board is all on this website. So it's a wealth of information. Next slide. We will, our applications will be opening on um, October, November of this year for the 2023 cohort. And what I really tell people is when you're going into 
um, when you're interested in applying, start doing it sooner than later because it is a lengthy process. There's a lot of um, documentation families need to get together. So the sooner people can start working on that, the better. Next slide. Um, before I see if there's any questions or comments, again, the overall goal of the U Matter program is for our students to be ready for competitive employment in a career field that they are interested in. So they are driving this career boat and they are driving their um, education so they can learn more to be a teacher's assistant or they could learn more to work in the hospitality industry. And so, and that's our goal is to educate and help them grow so they can be contributing citizens to their community. And at this time, I will take any questions or comments or thoughts. And I think on the next slide, I have my contact information. Are individuals allowed to um, commute for your program or is it required that they stay on campus? Excellent question. Students can commute um, to our program. They are responsible for their own transportation. So yes, they totally, we actually in our new cohort that will be starting in August, we have two students that will not be living on campus. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we go to the next? I think there's one more slide. It just has our my information on it. Yes. So um, there's my information. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to um, reach out to me. I will say one thing that has been really awesome um, coming off the pandemic. Um, I did a presentation to one school, but because we were doing it through teams, it was one school, but four different classrooms at the same time. So that was really cool. And the students got engaged. They loved hearing about the option, the possibility of going to college. So if anybody wants me to present, I will talk about you matter if anybody asks. I have one additional question. If someone has a personal assistant or a one-on-one -on -one staff person, are they allowed to stay in the dorms? They are not. The dorms are for um, the students. And so, um, and that's the independent functioning of a student because you're talking about um, using the restroom, going to eat, being um, actively engaged. So there's a level of independence that needs to be done, uh, this, our students need to have. Um, if a student has a one-to-one -one aid, what I wanna do, I wanna hear more about what that situation is because um, I don't wanna make a decision based on just hearing one sentence, so. Like are, so there quiet. Any, are there any additional questions? Somebody mentioned in the chat, they said, this is awesome, a little different than the PALS program. I'm not sure which, which program they're referring to, PALS. That's the program at UCF. Oh, okay, yeah. I was curious uh, how you helped families who are, you have families who are kind of uh, cautious trepidatious about their um, their son or daughter <laughs> <laughs> being on campus and... oh definitely definitely and um it's so funny because right before this um I have one student who has really developed a lot of independence living skills incredible has become an advocate for themselves has has really is blossoming into an incredible young adult. So that being said, the student does not want to go home because the student doesn't feel like they are treated as an adult when they go home. 
So sometimes it's a little bit of the reverse. It's like now the student's growing up um, and the parents still want, you know, we all want, you know, once our students grow up, our children grow up, it's like, sometimes it's just hard to let them go. Um, I will say after the first semester, the growth that the family saw in their young adults was incredible. Um, they, they were talking about how responsible they were with keeping their schedules. The communication has um, increased, but also matured. And um, so at first, yes, parents were apprehensive, but I will say it's almost no different than any other parent who is sending their child off to college for the first time. So, and we do all our students, we have two, our, from our current cohort, we have two that are local. And then the other five come from um, Bradenton area, Orlando, Northport, Jensen Beach, Sarasota. So kind of all over central Florida. And again, I'm always available to talk about the UMatter program. So don't hesitate to reach out.